What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Uh, uh, let me get my glasses on first. That might that might help. Uh, hello, welcome back. Um, got this really stupid light glare. Uh, what make do? <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the channel, guys. Uh, we are here in the craft room. Uh, a little bit quiet, not the usual spot in front of the computer, but we wanted to reach out and uh, do a little bit of a video going over the haul that we got uh, from our last video at London Comic Con Spring. That was that was a whole bunch of fun. And uh, what is that a controller? Right. Controller. You know, I've actually been looking for this for a few days now. Uh, now I'm probably going to lose it again, but eh, anyway, I digress. Um, yeah, this right here is actually going to be an upcoming video. Uh, it's an unboxing that we're going to be doing. Uh, it is our new laser engraver. So that's going to be coming in the next couple days. But I digress. We are going to be going over uh, some of the haul that we got for London Comic Con Spring. Um, total blast. Uh, being out there and doing that got to meet some incredible cosplayers some wonderful business people and got to meet an icon that i've wanted to meet my whole life uh christopher lambert so for a lot of people they know christopher lambert as the highlander which for me i know him as the highlander but that's not what i was first introduced to him as i was introduced to him as lord raiden from mortal kombat and so for me, that identified who he was for me in my brain. Highlander is cool and all. I absolutely love that series. Wonderful. Uh, we don't talk about a TV series, but him as Raiden is just incredible. And getting to meet him, as you guys saw, uh, we couldn't record the actual interaction with him. Uh, there were just little rules uh, in place that we couldn't do that, but... He was a charming man. Got to speak with him for several minutes, actually. I was I was really happy I was able to talk with him. And let me tell you, he may be older. I think he's in his 70s now or something like that. But let me tell you, he sounds still exactly like he did back when he did that movie. Like, it was incredible. And he agrees that uh, Mortal Kombat Annihilation is uh, absolute trash. <laughs> But uh, anyway, let's uh, we're gonna jump into it. Um, so up first, a uh, couple presents. Not really for me, for the misses. Um, you guys know me as a huge Star Trek fan, sci-fi fan. Uh, you know all sorts of things. Uh, my the misses, however, is really big into a video game series called uh, Kingdom Hearts, uh, which is a great game. I've actually never played through the entirety of the series. I know. Uh, shame on me for that. Um, I need, I should probably do that someday. Um, heck, I didn't play Zelda until I was in my 20s. So, I'm not saying anything. Uh, but she has the original Keyblade that you guys see hanging on the rack, uh, in the office. But what we got her, forgive all the excess noise, we're gonna pop them open check them out so first uh, we got this keyblade here um, I to me this is a really dark and demonic keyblade I know it's representative of the bad guys in the game me personally this is my favorite styled keyblade uh, it's a really nice heavy-duty polymer uh, plastic um, so it's like, it's not quite foam, but it's not quite rigid plastic. Um, very good detail. It does have some filler in here. Um, obviously for being a mass production piece, obviously that's not going to be emptied. I could clear that out, but I'm going to leave that up to the missus. But it's got a really great handle, nice one-handed piece. Um, beautiful, well done. Um. No blemishes in the paint or anything like that. It's nice and straight. And, uh, yeah. So, this is the first one that we got. And, uh, she was like, oh, yeah, that that's cool. That's cool. And then, uh, a little while farther down, 
we came across another Keyblade. And I was like, yeah, there was another one. Um, I was like, it looks kind of like Angel, Angelic or whatever like that. She goes, oh, really? What's that? And I just sent her the picture of it. And let me tell you, um, you guys have heard me go off on tangents about Star Trek and stuff and just start going crazy and everything like that. That's what she did the second she saw this. I got like a three paragraph <laughs> message in response and i was like okay that's coming home too but we got this right here dang it is too big to fit in the lens here so i mean check that out i mean the chain is a little bit to be desired it's a little bit it's a plastic chain with a little foam so we're probably going to upgrade that in the future um to make that look better but just look at the detailing on this handle man that is absolutely gorgeous it's gorgeous darling gorgeous man just absolutely i love the the heart up at the top here for the life of me and for those who are watching leave it down in the comments you know scolding me or whatever you know writing what what these are again i am not a huge knowledge base on kingdom hearts but again same material this one's actually a little bit more solid than the the black one there so yeah, we uh, we got both of these. So now she has three keyblades, and apparently there's like a couple dozen different keyblades. So I have a lot of research and stuff to to do to to finish getting her those collections. Um, uh, the final big thing that I got. Uh, so for those who Oh, even those that know me um, don't often associate me with a particular movie um, because it's not something I talk about a lot. Um, but one of my all-time favorite movies is RoboCop. Not the 2014 remake, no. The uh, 1986, I believe, uh, with um, Peter Weller. As Murphy, aka Robocop, and like one of my absolute dream cosplays to do in my life is to do Robocop. I'm working on losing some weight. Um, I, I I need to lose a little bit more, about forty more pounds, and then I'll be then I'll be comfortable enough to to work on the suit. I've I've got the templates and files and everything to build it out of uh, foam, actually, and it'll be really nice and cool. Um, but I found this, but it is the RoboCop, Ultimate RoboCop. It's by NECA and Real Toys. It is in a, an official MGM sponsored uh, or licensed toy. It's uh, ages 17 and up because of the nature of the character. Here on the back, you got some uh, information on uh, some pictures, part man, part machine, all cop. The future of law enforcement and features a spring-loaded holster so his leg actually opens up um as to whether or not i will ever open this i don't know i may have to buy a second one so i can play with it because i am a giant child so we're just gonna pop it open it's just got a little velcro tab and uh here yeah you see the little tab there got on there posing and then getting right up on it Trying to get the reflection out. You got Robocop himself. Um, you got the changeable head without the helmet. You, there, here, here's his Auto 9 uh, M93 Beretta. Um, on the other side, over here, you see a sniper rifle that he only uses once, but uh, the bad guys, uh, Clarence Boddicker and everything, use that to try and hunt him. And he famously uses it on Ed 209 at the very end of the movie. Spoilers if you haven't seen it. It's been out since 1986. So go watch it. Um, it's on everything. Um, and then down here you have the bullet spray uh, from the gun. And then, oh, and then right above that you have a interchangeable hand that has his signature. It's technically... A cyber key that allows them to access OCP's database 
but it's a knife straight it's it's a knife <laughs> it straight up is a shank but it he is fully posable like uh so he's got all sorts of points of articulation so he's got his neck he's got his shoulders his elbows his uh waist can both churn and flex his legs his knees and his feet so he is very very poseable but i've been i've been hunting a figure like this for a couple years now um and i almost didn't even find one this con because i remember seeing it a couple years ago when i first got here at a convention and i was like you know what i'll wait i'll get some other stuff that i wanted to buy and i just haven't been able to find them since and i've found only one of these at london comic con so this is a very popular collector's toy so if i ever come across another one i'm probably gonna have to pick it up so i can so i can play with it but this is definitely going on the collector's shelf hell yeah so as far as big stuff that's that's all that there is we have a bunch of smaller things now because i am obsessed with collecting artwork whether it be from big artists little artists all sorts of stuff there's actually a gentleman that I was chatting to that is open to doing so open to doing can't speak English uh, some commission work um, which which would be really cool uh, to pursue in the future it's a little expensive but we'll see um, but starting right off we'll, we'll uh, we got you know we got our photo with him and I was so I love this photo this is oh, um, I'm gonna have to do another video going over all of my photos and signs and stuff and tell you about my interactions with some guests. But he was up there just doing, you know, the simple, you know, put his arm around you and smile, whatever. And I was, and I asked the lady, I was like, hey, do you think, you know, he'll pose with me? Because I'd been chatting with her throughout the day. Um, and she goes, well, yeah, just, just ask him. She goes, you have to be a little loud. He's a little hard of hearing now. But I walked up, and he goes, oh, you're back. And, and he, he, the way he laughs is exactly the way Raiden laughs in the movie. Like, <laughs> that's, that's how this man laughs. And he's like, <laughs> you're back. And uh, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I had to get my photo. And uh, I was like, would you mind posing with me as Raiden? He goes, of course. And just like instantaneously, like he drops his head and just strikes this pose. And it took everything I had to not freak out at that moment. Like, this is awesome. I mean, that that's pure oh, that's pure Raiden right there, man. Um, and of course, you know, you guys saw in the video um, when he was signing the booth, uh, the lady, bless her heart, uh, they only had one Raiden photo at the table, and they had a very small stack of it everything else was highlighted and so i asked her i was like hey here's my number in the line can you hold this for me because I'm, I'm getting this today and i popped back through the line like three times um waiting for my number to get called and so here it is right here it says to jared uh christopher lambert and him is Raiden. like this is so cool like freaking awesome um, let's see. And then the other star that I got to meet, um, is, is a newer, is, is, is kind of newer, uh, both, well, to me, um, she's been acting for a little while, but, um, I got to meet Christina Chong. Um, so the name probably doesn't sound familiar. Go ahead and look her up. She's a, she's a brilliant young actress. Uh, but she plays, uh, La'an Noonien Singh on Star Trek Strange New World. So of course I had to go meet her. Um and so as soon as I walked up to her I was like you're you're awesome cuz Strange New Worlds to me it's a, it's it's a throwback to classic episodic trek um because for those that know the the new style of trek follows you know just like a storyline. You know, boom boom boom. It's all a sequential order whereas you know, TOS, TNG, Voyager, um, all follow. Is there something in my beard? Anyway, uh, um, where it's kind of scattered around and you'll find different episodes. And you'll find an episode 
couple seasons later that references an episode in earlier, but it's more exploratory. It's more open and diverse. And that's what Strange New Worlds has really encompassed, and I love it. And so I got to meet her, and so I chatted with her for a few minutes, and she's just absolutely lovely. And of course, I had to ask what it's like to work with uh, Anson Mount and the rest of the cast and everything. And she's like, if if Starfleet were real, he he would definitely be the type of captain that you would want to serve under. Because I mean, even even off screen, he's very patient. He listens. He coaches with you. And like she, he'll he'll go over lines with you in costume. Like it's incredible. But she was such such a lovely young lady. And so we got her autograph there. Uh, says Jared, best wishes. Christina Chong on Nguyen Singh. So that's definitely going to be going in a frame. Um, so earlier I mentioned there was a gentleman I met that's interested in doing some commission work. Um, he has all sorts of stuff from movies, pop culture, uh, everything. And uh, it is, uh, let's see if I get the right, Bramble Down Designs. Here's, here's his card. I'm going to do a shameless shout out for him because his work is just incredible. Um, they do hand-drawn stuff and it comes in prints you can get it on shirts everything like they have a patreon and everything i'll put their information down uh in the description and so because they have a lovely yeah, t-shirts vests hoodies and masks mugs coasters cushions stickers bags and bookmarks any design they do they can put on it and so the one i found uh the one i wanted uh, was a bit out of my price range because it was this huge, like, like 19 by 17 uh, art, and it came framed and everything like that. But um, I found this after I got Christina's signature, but it is this kick-butt artwork of Strange New Worlds, to explore Strange New Worlds with the Enterprise. You got the Pike crew, and they signed it there at the bottom. And it comes in this uh, pre-slotted frame, so I just have to buy an actual picture frame to put it in. But just like, look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. And so I picked that up, and uh, yeah, he's. we were talking because he's done uh, Star Wars ones, where it was like a little silhouette of the character and then a symbol behind him and everything. I was like, you could do the captains um, with their ships behind them or whatever. And he really liked that idea. So we're going to be talking about that uh, in the future. So, and then uh, I, I found this other lovely table. Um, and it triggered pretty much all of my, <laughs> all of my nerd wants. Uh, and so I had to pick up some, uh, so, some poster work. So I got this. So for those who know, already know that I had to buy this. But this is Stargate SG-1 uh, Season... Eight, I believe um, and it hits home for me one because of this lady right here Dr. Jenna Fraser she wasn't even a main character but they wrote her so well that what happens to her in the show is so impactful that it was just oh my god just watch it uh, it's corny it's funny it's hands down today one of the longest running sci-fi shows to have ever existed um started on showtime um and then went over to sci-fi um they had one of the the best um direct to dvd movies ever released um but yeah here you have the sg1 team general hammond uh, jack o'neill you got oh at this time uh major carter Tilk, Dr. Daniel Jackson, and of course, Dr. Frazier. Up here, you have Anubis's mothership with a couple of Jaffa snaked warriors. Oh, and here we got Thor. Thor the Asgard. And then down here, you got a little replicator who is the scourge of the universe. And then up next, I found Star Trek. So, how to get Star Trek. I uh, can't say no to that. We've got uh, a lovely poster from Season 2 of Picard. Uh, both from all sides of it. You know, we got the hourglass representing the playing with time. We have the USS Stargazer reimagined for Season 
too, which is just a beautiful ship. We got Q, and we got all sorts of familiar faces on there. Season 2 was better than Season 1. Um, so far, Season 3 is the best um, out of the three. Unfortunately, it is the last season of it, but if you haven't watched it, i definitely go check it out. And then, of course, we found a Strange New Worlds poster. Love the Aztec coloring that they put on the Enterprise there. And then we got the main senior staff of the Enterprise for Pike's crew. Absolutely stellar crew, stellar crest. I love the storylines that they're pushing out. Um, it really does into it. Anthem out just brings a whole, whole another level to Star Trek. And it's like, wow. Star Trek Discovery is, you know, trudging along, doing well, doing very well. Um, they are coming to an end on their fifth season, but to me, season two is the best, purely because it had Anson in it as Captain Pike. Uh, another little Stargate reference. Um, we actually found a poster print of, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I can breathe, I promise. But a little poster print of the Egyptian Gazette, the made-up newspaper for the original Stargate movie uh, from when they found you know, the Ring of the Gods, or Gateway of the Gods. It says, Mystery Object Uncovered in Giza, Gateway of the Gods. And so, and it goes on and talks about it, and they have the sarcophagus of Ra, and then them manually lifting the Stargate out of the Giza Desert. And then the final thing that I got um, throws back to our main man here, RoboCop. And we have, again, a newspaper clipping. The Detroit Free Press Lawman of the Future RoboCop. And it's like a front page news thing. Um, absolutely wonderful. It's OCP Senior President Dick Jones, the future of Detroit and Delta City Project, talks about Clarence Boddicker and uh, Ed 209, uh, what happened with him uh, at the beginning of the movie. So yeah, absolutely had to get those because, you know, I'm a giant nerd and giant kid at heart. But yeah, so that is, was my haul from uh, London Comic Con Spring. So, yeah, no, it was a great, I spent one day out there, it was a two-day event, but uh, I could only get down there for one day. Um, met some great people, and uh, yeah, no, it, it was it was, it was was a lot of fun. Uh, as the day went on, that place got super packed. And so I'm definitely looking forward to the next con, which is actually going to be my main stomping grounds um, down in Minot, North Dakota, the MagicCon. Um, that's the show that I run, help run every year. Um, thanks to me and my other two admins and the wonderful team of volunteers that we have that help us out every year to throw us such a great event. Um, so if you're going to be in the area, come on out. Uh, it's going to be end of April. Um, but then after that, we have, let's see, after that, um, Bassing Stoke. Comic-Con, um, that one I'm absolutely excited for because that's a Stargate one. And then we have MCM London uh, after that, which that one, that one's going to be fun. That one's going to bring out a whole different level of, of childhood in me because they are doing a reunion of uh, Pokemon, the first movie. So the, the voice people are going to be there for that. So I've got this awesome... Uh, original poster now I'm going to have them all signed and then seal away so it never gets dust on it again but yeah so thanks for hanging out with me today in the crafting room we're going to be shooting more videos in here uh, creating stuff and all sorts of goodies for you guys so if you like what you want oh you like what you want you like what you see please hit that uh, like button leave a comment down below uh, please subscribe hit that notification bell uh, really helps out um as you guys can see we are a very small channel trying to trying to build up and so but without you guys we 
we wouldn't exist. So thank you very much for hanging out with us, and we will see you in the next episode. Peace out.